Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. I hope your mornings are going very well. Um, we're about to sing a couple songs, and I would love to invite you to stand and worship with us this morning.
great the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain i could not climb in desperation i turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the today. <laughs> I just want you to know, I had security and other people me giving me lion's material for this morning, but I'm not going to use it. I'm going to keep it. 
The only person I will share it with is Mike Palmer directly after today's message. Well, for those of you that are new here, hey, welcome to Kensington. My name is Adam. I'm part of the team here, and we do want to start off this morning just by saying we are glad you are here. We know that this might have been a time of mourning uh, because of what happened two weeks ago. I guess I did one little thing there, Um, but we're so glad that you are here with us today where we get to uh, celebrate and then go home and watch the big game, but we do have a couple of things happening in the life of of our church over the next couple of weeks that we want to make you aware of. And the very first one, if you have a student who is in sixth through eighth grade or you're connected to somebody who does, we would love to uh, just show you this. We are having our takeover event, which is an all-nighter, and you can see the details of that where the students are going to start at our Orion campus with a little bit of a service, and then they're going to be all night at a water park. We would love for you to come out and be a part of that. If you have any questions about that outing or just that ministry in general, after the service would love it if you would go to the wood wall on my left your right as you're sitting here that's where Stephen and Christina are they are over our youth ministry they would love to answer questions about Kalahari or that all the way up through your seniors in high school we would love for them to be in there we think it's a great space so if you have questions stop by there and ask them because they would love to chat with you about those as well the second thing that I want to share is I know most of you are aware February is Black History Month and we are celebrating that as a church as well. At Kensington, we really have a goal of being a a multicultural church, and we would uh, love to say that we've arrived on that. We absolutely have not. It's something that we're still working on, um, where we get to celebrate and remember uh, what uh, people of color done in American history, and we know all of the difficult things that goes along with that. And what we really believe is as we learn more about American history, it will help go a long way into us reaching that goal. So this is the request that we make of all of you. As you go uh, to kensingtonchurch.org slash black history month and on that you will find a page full of resources that you can learn about different dynamics that have happened in our nation's history there are podcasts you can listen to craig mays and dr clarence Schuler have a very frank conversation about how race has played a role in their relationship and the difficulties and the struggles there are books and podcasts and i believe that every single one of us just takes one step in learning a little bit more, it will do a great deal in our uh, local community here. As a staff, we at Clinton Township are actually going on a tour called the Ark of Justice Tour downtown. So there's so many things. Go to the page, check it out. We would love for you to jump in and be a part of that with us. Today, we are also having our CT Connect. It's an opportunity, if you are new to the church, to get to know us a little bit. Myself and some of our staff will be here. It's gonna happen directly after this service. And if you can't come today, you can see the ones coming up in the future. But if you have any questions about the church or you'd want to learn a little bit more, we'd encourage you to come out and be a part of that. It's only 30, 45 minutes, not long at all, but we would love to have you there with us as well. And then finally, in the next couple of weeks, I think it's the end of February, we're going to be having a night of worship. We just want to put that on your calendar so you can make yourselves aware of it. We're going to have childcare. We'd love for you to come out and be a part of that with us as well. Now, if you have any questions over the things that I just shared with you, would encourage you to stop at the hub after the service. They can answer those for you or take your information and one of us from staff will contact you. And if you are a guest here, this is your second, third time, or maybe we've just never been able to interact with you, we would love for you to stop there. The people that serve over there at the hub would love to meet you. And we have a little something just to say thanks for being here with us today. Now, with all that said, why don't you go ahead, stand up, greet your neighbor, and maybe tell them who it is that you are cheering for this Sunday. There is a correct answer. Good morning. Hello, hello. Welcome to everyone who is joining us online for week two of our series called Get Going. And just like what we did a moment ago, sharing who we hope wins tonight, which my share was that I'm just watching for the snacks. That's all I'm there for. Thank you. Yes, my snack people. But there are things that we love to share with others, that we want to talk to them about, that usually it's things that we enjoy or that we're really passionate about. But then there are other things that we will avoid talking about with other people at like 
all costs. And so I thought we could have a little fun this morning and see what that is for us. So we're going to put some topics on the screen there. And if it's something that you'd be willing to talk about with other people, share, even just a little, you can make some noise, a little woohoo, some claps. But if it's something you're like, there is no way ever I would ever talk about that with anyone, quiet. So that means at times we're going to be loud and rowdy, and others, it might just be one person yelling, and that's okay. We're going to see who's here with us. So here's the first one. Football games. Yeah? Okay, yeah. There's a big one tonight. Yes? All right, so football games. Most of us like to talk about that. All right, what do we have on our next slide? The Detroit Lions. Yeah, okay. I'm not even a football person, but I'll talk about the Lions. All right, next one up, we've got... Dan Campbell, okay, yes. Most of us are, we'll talk about that. Okay, and then we go to death. Oh, a few of you. Um, also, there was no pre-planning of Lions, Dan Campbell, death. I'm just, <laughs> okay, no, not really. Okay, next one. So not many people want to talk about death. The weather. Yes, Adam, it is like the best small talk thing. Like if you don't know what to talk about with someone, just say, so what about the weather? What a winter we've had, guys. Okay, next one is bowel movements. Okay, I am shocked by how many of you want to talk about bowel movements. And we're talking across both services. Wow, wow, okay, very surprising. All right, next one. Movies. It could be your favorite movie, the worst movie you ever saw. Okay, yep, I like talking about movies. And then we have your embarrassing moments. Oh, we had a, yep, okay, a little bit more. First service, not many of them wanted to talk about their embarrassing moments. All right, and then what do we have next? Politics. Okay, I heard, I heard some more like, ugh, like the grumble. <laughs> With that one, I get it, I get it, okay. And then past relationships. Sure, okay. If you want to know, I'll tell you, I guess. Okay, not too many, that's okay. And then we have, I think, one more. Your favorite restaurant or food? Yes, I love to talk about my favorite food. My favorite food is called poutine. And I'm very passionate about it, and I have very high standards. I mean. Seriously, I can just go on and on about it. You can ask me after service. But when it's something that we love or that we enjoy, we will talk about it. We want to share. Maybe it's that good deal that you got at the store. Here recently I was shopping, and because I had store points and a sale, they paid me to buy something. Like, I didn't have to spend it. They actually gave me money back. And I have been telling everybody. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is the best thing ever because I was excited about it. Or if you're a parent, you probably share things about your kids or their, their accomplishments. Or maybe it's when you get that new car and you, you love talking about all the bells and whistles. You're like, oh my gosh, the car can do this. Or it's that pet that you recently adopted. Or maybe it's the vacation that you went on. We love to talk about those things. But as we experience, there are some things that we avoid talking about. For some of us, it's bowel movements, but not many of you from what I discovered. <laughs> it could be maybe it was a divorce or politics or it could be debt or death. And sometimes we don't really like sharing about our faith. Sometimes we struggle to share that with other people. Now, there can be many reasons why. It could be because we just, we feel uncomfortable. We feel like it's difficult or that we're just scared to do it. Even this idea that I said sharing faith, maybe your palms got sweaty. Your heart's like, oh gosh, you're going to make me share my faith. Because we feel like we just, we can't. You're like, I, I, I can't do that. I, I, don't, I don't know how to do that. Or maybe you've tried doing it and it just felt weird and awkward. And you're like, hey, do you want to know about Jesus? And you're like, oh my gosh, what just happened to me? Or you got worried because you don't want to say the wrong thing. Like genuine, you're like, I, I, I don't want to. Or you, you don't want to be laughed at or mocked or rejected. Or maybe it's a struggle because you understand that faith can be a very complex thing in other people's lives. And you're well aware of that, but you're just not sure how you navigate that to share faith. Or maybe you've just had some poor experiences in the past. You've been met with hostility or negativity or you felt ashamed. So you're like, oh, done. I'm not even going to go there. Now, I grew up in a faith-centered home. So I was very comfortable going to church and doing Sunday school and youth group and Bible study, singing hymns and all the church things. That was very normal for me. But the one thing 
the one thing that got me super nervous and even scared at times was this idea of sharing faith. Like, I was like, oh gosh, I don't want to do that because I didn't want to be labeled as weird or the religious nut. I didn't want my friends to reject me or even strangers because what I had seen as sharing faith, it meant I was supposed to go stand on a street corner and yell at people with a megaphone or that I, it was asking for money on a TV show or it was like tricking people with some like bait and switch pamphlet or telling people that basically they're awful by using fear, guilt, or shame. And I was like, mm, mm -mm, don't like that. It feel, doesn't feel right. I don't, I, I, there's no way. I mean, I avoided doing it at all costs. But as I got to know Jesus, not church or religion, but got to know Jesus, I began to understand that he was actually different than most of those methods. But I still felt intimidated. I felt inadequate when it came to sharing faith because I saw it as something for the super duper Christians. And so I wonder, like, do I even need to? Like, do I need to share faith? Eh. Yes. It's actually a yes for all of us who consider ourselves Christ followers. Jesus invites us to share our faith. I mean, we read this in Mark chapter 16. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. So Jesus, he is talking to his disciples, but he's also talking to us that we are to preach the gospel, which means really sharing the good news of Jesus, of his kingdom. But the big question then is how? Like, how do we do that if we feel incompetent or we feel scared or we just feel uncomfortable with it? How do we do that confidently and not do it in a weird or imposing or even a creepy way? I mean, how? So today, we are going to look at the life of Jesus, and we're going to see how he shared faith, and how we too can share faith because of him. So will you join me as we just take a moment to pray and to ask God that he would speak to our hearts today. God, I just thank you so much just for this day and for this opportunity to gather together. And I thank you for everyone who is in this room and who's watching online. And I just pray that each one of us, our hearts would be open to hear from you today, that we would see just the beauty of who you are in new ways and the opportunities that we have to share you with the world around us and that you would give us courage and that you would fill us up and that we would be people who are passionate about you and sharing about you. We pray these things in your name, God. Amen. Well, I gotta tell you, one of the things that I am passionate about talking and wanting to share with others is about our global partnership specifically in Kenya. And so over the past couple of weeks, we have had a team there doing some incredible things, but I wanted to share two things with you. So on Tuesday, they got to be part of an anti-FGM rally. So they were off in a village in western Kenya with the Pokot tribe, and you're going to see a picture here on the screen in just a moment, where they got to share with this, the people that attended. Over 2,000 people came. It was absolutely incredible that they were standing up against FGM, saying no to that, and inviting other people to also stop this practice, this harmful practice. And in this rally, five elder women who have been women who have been cutters, which we see right here in this picture, they publicly vowed to no longer participate in FGM and they surrender their tools. They gave up their knives and they are no longer part of this practice. This practice has been so harmful. Yes, please, that is an incredible thing to be celebrating. And then just the other day, our team got to go do a workshop with about 30 girls from the rescue dorm in an area called Coke Deach. And so these are the girls there. And most of these girls have been rescued from either sexual assault or gender-based violence or it forced, attempted into early marriage, attempts into FGM. And these girls have now been rescued. They are part of our child sponsorship program that we have here called No Child. And through this workshop, they were learning and working through trauma and how to deal with trauma, but not just working through, but through the lens of Jesus Christ and learning that they now have value because of Jesus, that their value is in him and that they have a purpose. That even though they have gone through some of the most horrific experiences that probably most of us could never imagine, that they have a purpose. And there is true life that is being transformed in these areas, remote parts of Kenya. And so we get to be a part of that. That is something that we are passionate about here at Kensington. And it is because of us being on mission together. It is actually because of our giving 
Your giving makes it possible for these, that we can continue to reach people and for them, for their lives to be changed. And so at this time in the service, we are going to receive our offering. And there's different ways that you can give here at Kensington. You can give as they pass the bags through the rows, or you can see right there on the screen how you can give electronically. But we invite you to jump in and be a part of this. Be a part of life change because of the love and the hope of Jesus Christ. It is happening in remote parts of the world and all around the world and right here in our backyard because we get to be on this mission together. So thank you so much. Thank you for your faithful giving. And I gotta tell you, there are multiple ways that we can support our global partners. And one is through our giving, but also through prayer. I would highly encourage you to be praying for them and for the work that God is leading them and how, what they are doing in so many different parts of the world. But also, much like what our team experienced this last couple of weeks, is that you can go on a short-term trip and go work alongside some of our global partners. And you can find out more information by going to the website or stopping by the hub. My husband and I, we are leading a trip this summer to the Dominican Republic. It's a family trip, so we're taking our two boys. And if you'd be interested, I would love to share more about that with you. It could be your whole family. It could be a mom and a daughter, a dad and son. It could be an aunt and nephew. I mean, the combinations are endless, but it's just another opportunity for us to jump in and support this mission that we have here at Kensington. Now, I grew up in a very small rural town in southern Manitoba, Canada. And most of the people that lived there always lived there. Like, they always, they, they moved there, they worked, they lived, and that was it. I mean, for generation after generation after generation. But every now and then, there would be someone who would, like, leave. <laughs> they would go off to college, maybe off in a different province, and then, then they would get some important job, and then they would live in a big city. And I can always remember the commotion when such a person would come back for a visit. Like the town would be electric with gossip and just curiosity and wondering like, ooh, what are they like? Are they still going to like us? Are they going to be okay with the small town life? And all these questions. Well, the story that we're looking at today is a passage that is found in Luke 4. And it's when Jesus returns to his hometown after having been gone for a while. And so he's become well-known in the surrounding countryside. But I have to imagine that the people of Nazareth were a little curious, maybe had that, some of that excitement, just wondering, like, ooh, what's Jesus going to be like? And so we read this passage. It's found in Luke chapter 4. And it says, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. And news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. So Jesus, he's back in his hometown, and he did what all the Jewish people did. He went to synagogue. Now, the synagogue was an important part of the Jewish life, because it was a place of worship. And so a rabbi would be invited to come and read a passage of scripture, and then usually it was pre-planned, and then they would offer some thoughts and commentary on it. So Jesus participates in this, and he is handed a passage from Isaiah 61. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So Jesus, he reads a passage of scripture that was written 700 years before he was born. He then sits down and says that the scripture is now fulfilled in him. I mean, just imagine what the people must have thought. I mean, they had known Jesus since he was a little kid. I mean, the very next verse says the crowd asked, isn't this Joseph's son? I mean, they knew him as a son of the carpenter. I mean, he was the guy they called when their table was wobbly. Like, they knew that he was good with a hammer and a saw. And now, in his very first appearance back in his hometown, he's claiming that he is the fulfillment of the prophecy. The prophecy of a powerful king, a ruler who would redeem and save Israel. And Jesus is going, yep, I'm the guy. 
I mean, just, I mean, they, they had to be shocked, a little bit in disbelief. But this wasn't fake news. The hoped for king, savior, ruler, the bringer of justice and peace had come. But this moment was more than just Jesus announcing his arrival. He was really sharing the heart of his mission about the good news of his kingdom. Jesus was sharing an invitation into his kingdom, which was a new kingdom, a new way of life, a new way that would lead to new hope and ultimate freedom. And after that day in the synagogue, Jesus went and did that. I mean, he did exactly what this passage stated. I mean, he cared for the poor. The blind experienced healing. They were given sight. I mean, people were freed and liberated. But his mission was more than just the physical. It was about bringing healing, wholeness, freedom, and hope to the entire person for the physical, the emotional, and the spiritual. I mean, the longing of Jesus' heart was that Everyone would encounter love, hope, redemption, and reconciliation through him. And how Jesus shares this good news, his good news, reveals to us how we too can share faith. And so there's two aspects that I want to highlight for us this morning. And the first one is this. Jesus announced availability. Jesus announcing his kingdom and what his kingdom was going to be like in Luke 4 was really a proclamation of new hope for all people, for all people. And we see this throughout his life. But there is this one encounter that's found in Luke chapter 9. Jesus had just finished feeding the 5,000 people. And then he goes on to share an invitation to follow him to follow his ways, to be a part of his kingdom. And we read this in verse 23. Then he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Who was the invitation for? Then he said to them all. All. The invitation is for all. Jesus is for everyone. And we see throughout the first four books of the New Testament how Jesus, he continually shared the availability of his kingdom is for everyone. I mean, he invited 12 overlooked, insignificant, basically rejects to follow him. He invited a despised, sinful tax collector waiting up on a tree into his kingdom. He invited a woman who was brought into the temple courts, caught in adultery, into new life. He invited a thief hanging on a cross into paradise. Over and over and over again, Jesus was sharing his message of hope and that his kingdom is available to everyone. Which includes us. It includes us. And it doesn't matter what choices you have made or what circumstances have happened to you or any pain or suffering that you have experienced or what questions or doubts that you have, Jesus is available for you. You are invited into his kingdom and he desires that you would encounter new life and new hope through him. So when it comes to sharing about Jesus, sharing our faith, that means anyone and everyone is invited to encounter Jesus. Like, we don't have to figure out who is or isn't included because everyone is. His message of hope is for all people. Like, no one is off limits. No one is too broken or too damaged. No one is too immoral or evil. No one is too far out of reach. He is for everyone. His kingdom is available for everyone. So that means for those of us who are Christ followers, that we are to share Jesus with everyone. That we can share Jesus with our friends, that we can share it with our kid's hockey coach, that we can share it with our coworker or our favorite barista, that we can share it with everyone because everyone is included. But the thing is, it's easy to share with the people we like. It's a little harder and we tend to want to avoid the people that we don't like. I mean, I'll be honest with you, I I have a neighbor that I struggle with. And I actually am happier to just kind of ignore them and be annoyed at them 
rather seeing that maybe there is opportunity for me to share Jesus with them and that they too could encounter new life and new hope. But Jesus is for everyone. His kingdom is available. So that means we are to share Jesus with the neighbors that we don't like or with the person in your family who votes differently than you or the person who has a lifestyle that you disagree with or the person that you just think would never ever even want to hear about Jesus. We are to share the availability of his kingdom. We are actually to share and emulate Jesus and how he shared the availability of his kingdom. Because his kingdom is for everyone. I love how author and philosopher Dallas Willard said it. He said that God's intent was to have a kingdom in which we are significantly involved. That is the eternal as well as the temporal. Every human being Every human being, wherever they may be, is given the opportunity to enter into a companionship, a working relationship with God. The kingdom of God is what God is doing, and his plan was that he would be doing many things with us. Every human is invited into relationship with God, and he desires a kingdom in which we are all significantly involved. See, we get to share the availability of his kingdom. We get to do that. And we do that when we share Jesus. See, it's not about sharing about religion or what we think is right or wrong. It's just sharing about Jesus. The person of Jesus, because who Jesus is, is that he came for all people. So we just share Jesus. Jesus announced his availability, and secondly, is that Jesus modeled his mission. He modeled it. Like, it wasn't just something that he talked about or read from a scroll. Jesus lived his mission in his everyday life. He lived a life of love, of humility, of grace, of forgiveness, of service and sacrifice. I mean, Jesus, he demonstrated this. He loved people, and he demonstrated God's love by healing the sick, feeding the hungry, caring for the marginalized. I mean, he honored, valued, and elevated women, children, and the poor. And he ultimately lived out his mission by reconciling humanity from the brokenness of sin to himself. By going to the cross of Calvary and laying down his life. 1 John 4 says, This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Jesus modeled the ultimate display of love and sacrifice so that we could encounter his good news, that we could have his joy, his love, his peace, his grace and forgiveness in our lives. So that means for any of us who are Christ followers, we are invited to share Jesus by how we live our lives. Now, that doesn't mean that we're supposed to wear biblical robes and sandals everywhere. I mean, as a person who loves shoes, like I love shoes, I can't be doing the Jesus sandal every day. It's not happening, okay? Nor does it mean that we are to live the super strict, perfect, sinless life. But what it does mean is that we are to live lives in reflection of his love and the ways of Jesus. So we share Jesus when we choose patience and kindness, when the cashier is going a little slower than we wanted to at the store. We share Jesus when we choose not to flip someone off in traffic. We share Jesus when we help shovel our, our neighbor's driveway, or maybe at this point it's buckets of rain. I don't know. This winter is weird in Michigan. We share Jesus when we pick up that one piece of trash that everyone else just keeps walking by because people notice and they're going to go, why? Why are you so different? Why are you doing these things? And you go, Jesus, because this is who Jesus is. This is the character of Jesus. We share Jesus when we choose forgiveness over retaliation and love over hate. Sharing Jesus is living our lives in reflection of Jesus. He lived a life that proclaimed his good news. He announced his availability. He modeled his mission, and he invites us to do the same. See, it's not about knowing all the Bible verses. 
You don't have to have a pastoral degree. You don't even have to completely understand theology or even have your faith all figured out. It's just about sharing about Jesus, about that we have a living hope, much like the song that the team sang earlier. It's sharing about his good news. It's sharing about his love. It is sharing about Jesus. See, we are to just share Jesus. Just share Jesus. Now, last week, Brian and Becca Mowry kicked off really how we can get going in sharing Jesus with the first step being to pray first that we are to pray first. And if you weren't here, I would highly encourage you to go online and watch the message. Brian challenged us in this season that we are calling Reaching the One and in our year theme of Above All to specifically pray for three people to share Jesus with. And so I would invite you into this opportunity of what we're calling the Pray for Three Challenge. Because prayer is the first and most important step. When it comes to sharing Jesus, pray first. Pray that God would guide you and lead you. I mean, Jesus himself, this was important to him. I mean, the very first line that he shares in the synagogue that day was that the Spirit of the Lord is on me. Jesus himself relied on the power of the Spirit to carry out his mission. And that same Spirit is available to us. Like, we're not alone in this. We don't have to figure this out. We can ask the Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us, to give us wisdom, to give us strength, to give us courage and clarity. And then... As we live and we interact with people, we share Jesus. We share who he is. We share how Jesus has changed our life. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It definitely doesn't need to get weird. And it doesn't require you to stand on the street corner yelling at people. It's just sharing Jesus. It's sharing that he is your redeemer, that he is savior, that he is the truth and the way that he is a restorer, a deliverer, that he is love, joy, peace, and hope, that he is a refuge, he is faithful, he is merciful and grace, he is a friend, he is healer, he is unchanging. We just share Jesus, the story of Jesus in our lives. And so I'm gonna invite my friend Steve to come up here, and he's gonna share with us a little this morning about who Jesus is in his life and the impact that Jesus has had, because that is what we are to do. We're just to share who Jesus is and how he has changed our lives. So thank you, Steve, for being here with us this morning. And I would love for you to maybe just start out by telling us, what was your life like before Jesus? First, I want to say hello, Kensington. I love you. And they gave a microphone to an Italian. Uh, it's going to be, I'll, I'll just bump it up. It's yeah, going to be okay. <laughs> Well, I look back now, I I didn't realize it. Um, I was of the world, and it says a man should be isolated alone, and I didn't have any community. And uh, I didn't have any role models. I didn't know how to live my life. Um, Unfortunately, me and my wife, Crystal, we were both of the world. We didn't have, our marriage wasn't based on Jesus and a sacrificial love. It was more based on emotional love, so we divorced. By the grace of God, we realized our mistakes, and uh, we were fortunate enough to remarry and raise our children together. So what it taught me was um, God wastes nothing. There's always beauty from ashes. Yeah. So how has Jesus changed your life? Well, it started with my wife, Crystal. Uh, I just had this image after the first... I kind of drafted her, like if you guys know racing. Like Crystal's faith was always in front of me. Um, In 2018, she went through um, rehab and she found her spirituality there. I was stuck in legalism. Like I thought I had to be perfect Mm -hmm. to come back to God. And I, I got stuck in there for decades, to be honest. And I just didn't see a way. And she just looked at me and she said, will you go to church with me? And that's really how it started. And uh, I did, and I cried the entire time, and I knew I was home. Mm. So um, what I promised to Jesus at that point was that I would be uncomfortable for him, hence I'm here today. And, um, but out of that becomes beauty, mm. and sometimes that beauty isn't easy. So what I also didn't see was, the, was a community that would form around me. Like, I didn't foresee that and how important that would become later. Um, 
So last year, my beautiful wife, Crystal's life was battling ovarian cancer. Crystal knew she would be healed one way or another, but it just wasn't here. And I got to witness her Job-like strength, like seriously, God, like how strong did you make this woman? She never cried, she never pitied. The only thing she said at the end was this was no life. So time and time again, Jesus showed up in this journey and the doctor visits and the nurses and the people that we met. And um, here in the last, you know, the worst days of my life after my wife had passed was Jeff Frick ministering to my children. And that's my one prayer, is that my children would come to know the fullness of God. And again, God wastes nothing, beauty from ashes. And that was definitely, for me, and I, I pinched myself because I couldn't believe it was happening. But without Jesus, I wouldn't have understood the victory Jesus had won for Crystal over death. And if you knew Crystal, her big heart is unleashed in heaven. And I long to see that. I just seriously, I miss my best friend. As my daughter says, because we love big, we grieve big. So my heart goes out to you out there in the audience that are grieving. I know you're out there. Right now, where I'm at, the only comfort outside my children and my grandchild is I turn to Jesus and I listen to worship songs. It's really just where I'm at right now. Um, I just hope that you choose that same path because Jesus has you. So what does Jesus mean to you right now? Um, well, I have a lot more written, but I, I just want to show this block of wood that Crystal bought when she first found out she had ovarian cancer. Can you read cancer. what it says to us? And it says, trust the next chapter because you know the author. Mm -hmm. And that's how she lived her life. And it's a gift that's given to me. And, um, you know, my kids during all this, they kept asking, Dad, who are these crazy people that love mom and you? And they said, you never had that before, did you? And I said, no. I said, it's because of your mom's faith. Mm -hmm. And again, God wastes nothing, beauty from ashes. Yes. Thank you, Steve. Thank you so much. Can we please thank Steve? Thank you, Steve, so much for just sharing with us your heart, your vulnerability, and really sharing Jesus. And that's what it's about. It's sharing how Jesus has brought in healing, wholeness, and freedom in your life from the brokenness and the sin and the hurt. It is sharing that you have been transformed because of the power of Jesus Christ, because of his love and his hope. And we get to share that with other people. And here's the thing. It's not gonna look the same as Steve. It's not gonna look the way I do it either, but it's the same Jesus. So just share Jesus. Just share who Jesus is to you and your life and how he is transformed. Now for any of us here today who are maybe exploring Jesus, we're maybe have some questions or we're curious about faith, know that today you too can experience and encounter the love and the hope of Jesus Christ in your life. And my encouragement for you would be to lean in and to discover more. But for any of us who are believers, we're to share Jesus. His mission is our mission. His mission is the groundwork of our faith and the call to action for each one of us. We are to share Jesus. Just share Jesus. And I know for some of us that might still be a little like scary or uncomfortable or something that you've actually never done, and that's okay. Remember that you are not alone, and the very first step is to pray. To pray first, to ask God to lead you, to guide you. And then my encouragement for all of us is that we would take a step this week. Just something, an opportunity to step into to share our faith, to share about Jesus. And there's so many different ways that we can do that. But one of the ways we can do that is actually by inviting people to come to church. Because when they come to church, it's an opportunity for them to experience Jesus. And we actually have made it easy. We have these little cards they're out in the lobby just before you come into the auditorium. And it has all the information. It has a QR code on the back so they can scan that and find out all about how they can come to church. Now, here's the thing. Please hand these out when you're talking with people, okay? If you just hand them out, that's when things do get weird and people kind of get creeped out. But when you're in a conversation, invite someone to church and just 
give them this card. And you don't have to worry about all the other details. You don't have to get lost in the weeds. Just invite them to come. But that's one of the ways that we can share Jesus. But as you go throughout your week, look at the everyday moments, the conversations, the stories, the things that you do, and how you can live your life to reflect Jesus. Because all we need to do is just share Jesus. That's it. Just share Jesus. Because when we do, we share with others that even though we live in a world filled with brokenness, pain, and suffering, there is hope. And his name is Jesus. Will you join me as we pray? God, I just thank you for who you are. I thank you that you are a God that transforms lives through the power of your love and your hope and your grace, that you are continually changing us and that we are living lives to become more and more like you. And I pray that you would give us courage, Jesus, to share you with others, whether it's with our friends, our family members, but that we would be a community of people who share Jesus. And for those of us who are nervous about this, this is something new, we've never really done that, I pray that truly that we would not feel alone in this and that we would feel that you are with us, that you will guide us, and that you will give us courage and strength. And for any of us who have maybe been just searching, we've been exploring faith and who you are, I pray today would be a time to encounter your love, to know your grace and the hope personally. And that for each one of us, we would be leaning into who you are and to live lives that reflect you, Jesus. We pray these things in your name. Amen. So we are all invited to know Jesus. To be a part of his kingdom. And to reflect that to the world around us, to share Jesus. And so our team is going to just lead us in a few songs. And I just invite you to join us to either reflect or sing about the ways of Jesus and his kingdom. Quickly, forever I 
He is worthy of it all. We have King Jesus who is the hoped for bringer of peace and justice. He is the Prince of Peace and he is the King of Kings and, and he invites us into relationship with him because his kingdom is available for all of us and he invites us to share that. And I was just standing over there and I was just overwhelmed of who he is because when we get to know him, he transforms lives. Those girls in Kenya will never be the same, but they will never be the same because of Jesus. Their past does not dictate them. Steve will never be the same again because of Jesus. And I know that story is throughout this whole room. And now we get to go share that Jesus with others. We get to share the Jesus who transforms lives with others. So go this week, share Jesus. Just share Jesus. I want to let you know that our prayer team is also going to be down front. They are here for you. They would love to pray with you. And we hope to see you back here next week for week three of Get Going. And otherwise, have a fantastic day and enjoy the game.